Amid escalating turmoil in Haiti, Canada is reducing its embassy staff by more than half to only essential personnel. Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie announced that move earlier, and here's what she said in part. Our ambassador and consular team will continue providing assistance to Canadians from Port-au-Prince alongside their colleagues temporarily abroad. We are committed to supporting Haiti and the Haitian people today and in the long term. Our immediate priority remains the safety and security of Canadians, and this intervention will help ensure it. Now, today, there's no sign of the violence diminishing in the capital, and there's growing concern about a potential famine. International efforts to stabilize the country are facing major roadblocks. The plan calls for a, a transitional council made up of political, private sector and civic leaders. But the head of a key political party is refusing to take part and other political leaders are also rejecting the plan. So let's stay on this story and bring in Brian Concanon. He is the founder and executive director of the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti and joins us from Boston. Welcome to the program. Appreciate your time. Well, thanks for having me, Hannah. It's good to be with you. Yeah, pleasure having you. Uh, let's talk about this plan for a tra uh, transitional council. Is it in danger of falling apart, or is this a part of the negotiation tactics here? That's a good question, and one that we'll find out. And one important aspect to keep in mind about this plan is that this is the United States plan. It's not the Haitian plan. The Haitians have come up with uh, a couple of different plans over the last two years on how to move towards forward towards a, a transitional a legitimate government, but the U.S. has rejected them each time. And this was really the U.S. putting putting the plan on the table with a lot of input into who got to be in this presidential council. And also, crucially important, the U.S. insisted that anybody participating um, accept that the international uh, security mission is going to be deployed, which is a pretty extraordinary concession for any country to say, we're going to accept somebody else's mission coming into our country as a precondition for being involved in politics. So one of the things as we talk about this story, uh, as the violence escalates, is, you know, Haitians must be in charge of this. What is the problem with the Haitian proposal that the U.S. doesn't like? The problem was that Haitians were in charge of this, as you said. I mean, there's mm -hmm. been a repeated... Um, repeated history led by the United States, but I think I think to be fair that Canada has participated, and this goes back to, to, to the 2000s with the overthrow of the elected Aristide administration, and it goes to include some of the support of the current, uh, the current repressive Haitian government, that there's been the powerful countries of the international community have supported these repressive leaders against Haitians' desire for democracy. I think Canada has has made some very important distinctions from the United States. Back about a year ago, um, your, your UN ambassador and some top military officials talked about how this mission was a mistake because it was going to be seen as propping up a repressive government. And so Canada, you know, there has been some 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 room between Canada and the United States, but unfortunately, there has not been a strong support by the international community for a freely elected or a freely Haitian-led solution to the crisis. Hmm. So uh, let's talk about our ambassador to the UN, Bob Ray. He says there's no place at the table for the gangs in this process. Makes sense when you say that, but they are so powerful that they will be included is that true in some form or another they are included i mean if you look at at several of the of the the groups that have been integrated that have been given a slot at the table have have gang connections um, one is the current government there's a long uh, list of human rights reports and un reports talking about how how current current government the current government's connected with gangs um, i think there's at least 15 people associated with the ruling PHTK party that have been sanctioned by Canada. Um, another group is the uh, Petite de Saline party, which last week made an alliance with, with uh, one of the major gang leaders, Guy Philippe. The uh, UN report last fall talked about how the private sector was deeply connected to gangs. So the gangs really already have uh, a seat at the table. Yeah, it's such a complicated issue, like simplistic things like gangs won't be there is kind of, like you say, 
it, it doesn't make sense. They are in some form, but maybe not as, hey, I'm here as a gang. Yes, they're, they're, their influence will be slightly disguised. Right. And, and, and th there's, there's actually no way of doing anything in Haiti without some uh, involvement in the gangs. You know, even simple things like you know, medical clinics or food projects in poor neighborhoods, you really can't do that without some negotiations mm -hmm. with the gangs because they control, the, the, control the, the terrain. And so that's just the fact on the ground that to some extent has to be uh, taken into account. But I think that there's, there's a, a spectrum and I think that you can give the gangs more or less uh, say in what's going forward. And I fear that the, the current setup is designed to give them more than is absolutely necessary. Why do you say that? Uh, just because so several of the sectors that were given the, the uh, power to create the government, as I, as I explained, already have documented connections to the right. gangs and those sectors have their own interests but part of their own interest is whatever their relationship with the gangs is can can any government transition actually occur in this security situation with the turmoil that's happening on the ground how does this have to unfold i guess is yeah, I that's a, that's a good question, and I think it is hard to have a transition while you have a security problem, but you're always going to have a security problem unless you have a government transition. So I think what you need to do is to do go have a process that is as Haitian-led as it can be that will develop the legitimacy needed to fight back against the gangs. And look, there's the gangs are not going to be removed overnight. This, this is a, a medium-term program problem that was created by the, the current government support for gangs over the last 10 years. But it's also a long-term problem. For decades, Haiti's government has not been able to provide basic government services. And when you have that, I mean, this happens in, in, in cities in the United States, the, the, the gangs will come in and, and fill a vacuum. So this is in order to really Re, re, regain control from the gangs, you're going to, it's a long-term project of providing basic government services, providing jobs, providing education. Great discussion. I'm thankful you could be on the program to help us out with this very important topic. Well, thank you, Hannah. Yep. Brian Cancon, thank you for joining us.